Bowling families are nothing new, but typically it's been father and son duos that we've seen mostly on the PBA Tour, such as the Webbers, the Troops and the McCunes. Then we even have some newer father-son duos such as Chris and Ryan Barnes and Parker and Justin Bone. But today we're going to focus on Bowling Brothers. I'm sure the first pair of Bowling Brothers that people would think of would be Darren and Michael Tang or perhaps EJ and Zach Tackett. These are probably the two most well-known Bowling Brothers in the game right now. But we're actually going to go back to the 90s in this video to look at a very interesting clash of two siblings. And this might have even been the most extreme case of sibling rivalry that we've seen on the PBA. The year was 1994 and the tournament in question was the National Championship. A pair of brothers made the live telecast and their names were David and Dale Traber. Both David and Dale were seeking their first ever PBA title, which only added to the sibling rivalry. David was the one seed and Dale the two seed, so Dale would need to win one match to set up an enticing encounter against his brother. But it's not just the bowling brothers that dominated the headlines in this telecast, there was even a 300 game in the show as well. So keep watching and we'll break everything down. So aside from the Traber brothers, you had Walter Ray Williams Jr. as the number three seed, Eric Falkel as the fourth seed, and Johnny Petraglia as the fifth. It would be the battle of the lefties in match one as Petraglia took on Falkel, and Falkel actually won this tournament two years previously. Petraglia had an opening seven pin that wobbled but would not fall, and Falkel had a similar result in frame two as well. Petragula threw a double and then Falkel left two very errant shots in a row going high but was fortunate to just leave the four pin but then missed left on his next shot and couldn't make the conversion. Petragula managed to take control of the match after three strikes in a row to take a 45 pin lead after seven frames. Things went from bad to worse for Falkel as he went high leaving the 247 and then chopped the spare, meaning that this match was basically over. Petraglia finished up with a 237 and moved on to meet the three seed, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Walter started off with a nice trip four, and then Petraglia threw two great shots for an opening double. Walter struggled to get going and went light in frame two and left the 27, but missed the spare. He did follow this up with a strike, but then left a 10 pin after this. Petraglia, on the other hand, just kept striking and had the front six. Walter did double, but then went through the nose for an eight spare. At this point, with a lead of 54, there looks to be only one winner. Petraglia strikes in the seventh and eighth to essentially put this match to bed. And now, it's all about whether he can bowl a perfect 300 game and take home a $100,000 bonus. He threw a great shot in the ninth, and now it's all down to the 10th frame. The first shot is a little bit light, but he gets the carry on the seven pin. Then we see the 11th ball is a bit high, and I thought for a second he was almost going to leave the eight pin, but the messenger came to the rescue. Now onto the final shot. A light hit, but given all the pressure and nerves, it was still a fairly decent shot given the circumstance. An absolutely incredible performance and a very nice bonus of $100,000. They did an interview with Petraglia right after this game and he was quite emotional and said the money would pay for his kids' college fees. This was the seventh 300 thrown on TV and he was the oldest player to do so at 47 years of age. However, despite this incredible feat, Petraglia still had a title to try and win and he would have to try and settle his emotions as he took on Dale Traber. Petraglia started where he left off with a double to make it 14 strikes in a row, but then in the third frame went right through the nose leaving the 4-7-10. Dale spared the 10 pin and then almost left a split himself. Petraglia looked to be struggling with his reaction at this point as the ball is really hooking and going quite high as he left back to back eight pins. Traber doubled to take a 14 pin lead and suddenly Petraglia seems to be all over the place missing the pocket completely. Jumping ahead to the ninth frame, Traber still has the lead but gets a bit unlucky here going light and leaving the 5-7. This results in an open frame and now he needs two strikes and six pins in the 10th frame to shut out Petraglia. 
He gets the first strike but then leaves a 10 pin and ends up with a 193 game. Now his opponent must double to win. He gets the first strike just like Traber and then his second shot results in a really bad break. I think this was probably his best shot of the entire match but he leaves the 9 pin standing. Overall it was a big come down after the perfect game but he was incredibly unlucky in the 10th frame. Although he wouldn't win the title, the $100,000 bonus certainly would have made him feel a bit better about it all. Now we have the title match and it's the battle of the brothers, Dale and David. Now, as I mentioned earlier, both of these players were looking for their first PBA title, but this was actually the first time they had made a PBA telecast, although Dale had won 15 PBA regional events. Our first look at David shows us that he has a faster ball speed than his brother and we see that this will be an advantage for him as this match goes on. His first shot goes through the nose but he avoids the split just leaving a 6 pin. Dale leaves the 7 pin and then goes high for the 3-6-10 and we can see from both players that everything seems to be hooking a lot now. Once again David's ball hooks up and he does leave a split this time the 4-10. But his next shot he appeared to make the right adjustment and seemed to increase his speed and this was a much better shot for his first strike of the match. Dale then goes slightly high but strikes and then goes even higher on the next shot. And this is the problem with his lower ball speed. He seems to be having issues controlling the reaction whereas David is able to move in and really increase the ball speed to stop the ball over hooking. David makes it a double but then it's just a pinch inside leaving a 4 pin. Dale leaves a split for an open frame to give David a 13 pin lead. David then struck and was willing the pins to fall over but the 4 pin stood again. Dale really did hand David the advantage as he went through the nose again for another split this time the big 4. David responded by striking on the right lane but then again goes high on the left lane which did seem to be a problem lane for him. This could easily have been a split, but he just got the 6 pin to fall. Even though Dale left 2 splits, it's not quite over yet as he manages to strike out. This means that David has to mark in the 10th to win his first title and he puts down an excellent shot which strikes and gives him the win. So it was the younger brother and the number 1 seed that prevailed in this battle of the brothers. The focus of this telecast was of course about the fact that these two brothers could face each other for the title but it was also fantastic to see Petraglia throw his perfect game too. This telecast was just the beginning for the Traber brothers as they both went on to achieve a great deal in the sport. David would go on to win multiple PBA titles and finish up with a total earnings of over $800,000 and Dale would, amongst other achievements, win the USBC Senior Masters in both 2009 and 2011. And that is going to bring us to an end of this video. As always, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I like the idea of this kind of sibling rivalry, so I might well try and find uh, some matchups of other brothers, probably uh, EJ and Zach and maybe even the Tang brothers and analyze those matches as well but I really wanted to do this match mainly because um, there were some really really great other matches in there as well and of course Johnny Petragler's 300 game. So if you have enjoyed this video I'd appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button below if you haven't done so already and as always thank you bowling fans and see you all next time.